here's a little tip. I'm working on a full moon painting, and I cut out a little kind of rough circle. It's not perfect for my moon, just so that part of the paper stays white no matter what. I really had a wonderful time painting this painting for my friend Kate. When I got to Truth or Consequences, uh, I was in need of money and she gave me $100 and said, paint me a $100 painting. And that night we had a full moon and it was absolutely spectacular and it was a special full moon for her. And so I was inspired to paint this for her. I love doing night skies. I don't do them very often. Uh, they are tricky for me. Uh, but this particular piece, I was so inspired and I really had a wonderful time doing all the blending that it took to achieve those clouds that are almost black, not black, right? And to allow the lighted clouds to overlap onto the dark of those clouds. It just took quite a bit of time, quite a bit of blending. You'll see often I'm using a pigmentless brush, so just a damp brush to wet the area and then move the pigment that I've already put down around. So I've made, you can see in certain areas where there are rings of color around the dark. And so what you're seeing me do here on the bottom is the thorough blending that needs to happen still in the top part of the sky. And you see me adding in a little bit of that zinc white in the areas where I left white. <clears throat> and that's so that I can do what you're seeing here, which is blend those wispy clouds over the top. And it's just, it's, that is my favorite brush. That is the Silver Black Velvet, number 10, round. I love using it for your regular blending like this because it is an incredibly soft-tipped brush. It holds a lot of water, so I do have to be careful of that. Water control is everything. It truly is. And when I'm working in gouache, less is more. And I do tiny bits at a time. And as you can see, it's just really a process that... Um, can be very meditative because it is about being patient and <clears throat> slowly moving the pigment and I'm so glad that I remembered to zoom in a little so you could see more closely what I'm doing. Uh, unfortunately because of where I have to hook up the camera my hand gets in the way but I, I, I do make an effort to try to get it out of the way. But you can see how that brush is really wonderfully handy. See how I took that and I can use the fine tip to do fine work, but then turn it on its side and have a big, fat brush to work with. I really love that. I really love that. This, I don't normally mask in a painting the way that I did in this one with the full moon by putting the tape where the moon will go. Uh, I have done it before when I've painted birch trees. I use that technique. Um, I'm not a fan of it because the tape leaves a residue behind that I don't like. Um, and that's just a personal preference thing. But I did it for this because it, it, it really called for it. Um, in order for me to not be overly worried about that spot in the painting. Sometimes with my OCD and anxiety, um, things will take me even longer because I'll be so hyper-focused on leaving the areas white that need to stay white. <clears throat> in this particular piece, you can see like 
the areas that I left are really irregular. Those are the shapes of the clouds, and you'll see how I am working in all of the different levels of color, light and shadow, from the moon radiating, right? Because it's behind and in front of, right? It's like, it's got this wonderful optical illusion that goes on when you look at the clouds over the full moon. And then the way the light bounces off of the clouds. It's pretty incredible. I hope you guys had a wonderful new year. This I did paint, you know, about a month and a half ago. And this is old footage. But I wanted to show you a little bit. This painting did not make it into the art show is why I wanted to show it here. I didn't get a picture of the finished painting either. I was wanting to be sure. I gave it to my friend Kate before she had to leave town. She had to go north. Poor woman. <laughs> north into snow country. She had to go to Minnesota. So this is at her home in New Mexico. So I do not have the finished uh, photograph, but at least you get to see how I build my clouds. Going back and forth. A little bit of shadow being added in now. blending and just teeny little bits of white and allowing the texture of the paper to help me uh, figure out where to put those little bits right and blend it and let the shadow fall into the valleys it's where the textured paper can be your best friend And I let the irregularity of the wash be the shape of the cloud. And then I just follow that with the tip of that brush to create those details in the clouds, right? It works beautifully. Mm. It might be cold in the van. Like, she's like, screw your lap. I'm just going to take the heater. She just sits right there. I mean, now she's gonna... <laughs> she likes to fish food out of the water. So I put a couple in there every once in a while from the bowl. That way also she gets more moisture in her diet. I, oh, my stove is absolutely filthy, yes, mostly from exploding coffee, because I don't pay attention and get distracted, even with it being right in front of me. Let me turn this down a little bit. This, I love this stove for the fact that I can do that. This is the Eureka. Nugget is insisting on being in the windshield so she can look out the window. It's a pretty morning, but it's also a pretty freezing morning. Isn't that beautiful? I love watching the light come on the mountain there. On Cattle Top. Cattle Top! I missed the monsoon season, but I caught at least one rainbow over Elephant Butte Lake, another sunset reflection on the opposite side of the lake. I just love this magical light here at Elephant Butte. Truly exceptional. And my final shot of Turtleback Mountain. Until next time. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.